Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among women. One in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. The methods we use today against breast cancer is ineffective, but there is a natural way to treat it without using toxic treatments. So today I'm going to talk about what breast cancer is and spotting the symptoms of it. And after that I'm going to explain different screening methods and why standard treatment don't work. And then I'm going to address the root cause of breast cancer and how to fix it. So what is breast cancer? So the vast majority of breast cancer cases occur in women. So it accounts for about 16% of all female cancers and 22.9% of invasive cancers in women. So breast cancer rates are much higher in first world nations compared to developing countries. The breast, like any other part of the body, consists of billions of microscopic cells. So Normal cells multiply as they should, and new cells replace the ones that died. In cancer, the cells multiply in an unusual way. So your body creates more cells than it needs. So a tumor can either be benign or malignant. So benign tumors are not considered cancerous. Their cells look close to normal cells, so they grow slowly and do not invade other parts of the body. Malignant tumors are cancerous and they can spread to other areas of the body. So breast cancer either begins in the cells of the lubos or the ducts. And the lubos are milk producing glands and the ducts are the passages that drain milk from the lubos to the nipples. So over time cancer cells can invade nearby healthy breast tissue and then they can make their way into the underarm lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are small organs that filter out foreign substances in the body. So a lump in the breast is often the first symptom of breast cancer. So other symptoms of breast cancer include pain in the armpits or the breast, which is unrelated to the woman's uh, menstrual period. Redness of the skin of the breast is another symptom and a rush around one of the nipples, a swelling in one of the armpits. There can also be an area of thickened tissue in our breast and one of the nipples may have a discharge. Sometimes it can contain blood and the nipple can change in appearance. It may become sunken or inverted. So the size or the shape of the breast can also change and the skin on the nipple or breast may peel, scale or flake. So how do doctors detect breast cancer and what are common ways to treat it. So women are usually diagnosed with breast cancer after routine breast cancer screening or after detecting certain signs and symptoms and seeing their doctors about them. So there are different ways to detect breast cancer. One of them is a breast exam. So during a breast exam, a physician will check both the patient's breasts. So they look out for lumps or other possible abnormalities. Another screening method is mammography. So mammography is a medical imaging that uses a, an X-ray to see inside the breast. So doctors use it to detect and diagnose breast disease in women. So breast ultrasound uses sound waves to make a computer picture of the inside of the breast. So the sound waves converge into a black and white image on a computer screen, and the the procedure is painless and does not use radiation. A biopsy is another way to screen for breast cancer. So a sample of the tissue from a lump is removed and then sent to the lab for analysis. And if they find cancer, the lab will also determine what type of breast cancer it is and then grade the breast cancer. MRI or magnetic resonance imaging uses magnets and radio waves to produce images of the body. MRI or magnetic resonance imaging uses magnets and radio waves to produce images of the body. So MRI does not use X-rays, so it's not, it does not involve any radiation. Thermography uses infrared imaging techniques to identify temperature changes in the body. So the change of color patterns can find 
cancer growing. So breast cancer screen has become a controversial subject over the last few years. The promotion of routine breast cancer screening creates more harm and have limited benefits. So, ma- so mammography screening has failed to reduce the number of deaths from breast cancer. So women who have mammography screening are as likely to die as women who don't use it. So run- one reason why testing doesn't work is the way we treat breast cancer. So let me explain, explain ways we treat cancer today and the negative impact it has. So surgery is quite common when they try to remove uh, breast cancer. So there are several types of surgery. In a lumpectomy, they remove the tumor and a small margin of the tissue around it. So it's used if the tumor is small and the surgeon believes it will be easy to remove it. A uh, mastectomy is when you remove the breast. So sentinel node biopsy is a surgical procedure to determine if the cancer has spread to your lymphatic system. Axillary lymph node dissection is a surgery to remove lymph nodes from the armpits. Br- breast reconstruction surgery is a series of operations aimed at recreating a breast, so its purpose is to make the breast look like the other breast. So surgery is a band-aid solution for treating cancer, so it doesn't take away the underlying root cause of it, So, and surgery only causes unnecessary suffering and stress to women. Radiotherapy uses radiation targeting the tumor to destroy the cancer cell, so it's often used after surgery or chemotherapy to kill off any uh, cancer cells that may still be around. So radiation therapy has many side effects. These include fatigue, darkening of the breast, skin and irritations. Cancer radiation can still affect the other organs, especially the heart, and it's an aggressive and toxic treatment that causes suffering in women. And radiation is also a carcinogen, which means that it causes more cancer. And because of that, cancer grows back with even greater force. So chemotherapy uses cytotoxic drugs to kill cancer cells. So the aim is to shrink the tumor and make it easier to remove it. So there are many side effects of chemo. These include vomiting, loss of appetite, fatigue, sore mouth, hair loss, and a higher risk of infections. So chemo is a dangerous method. So few people live five years after treatments. So hormone therapy is used to use for breast cancer that are sensitive to hormones. So the aim is to prevent cancer reoccurrence. So it's usually used after surgery. So hormone therapy aims to prevent estrogen from binding to cells to slow down cancer growth, and it will have no effect on cancers that are not sensitive to hormones. So hormone therapy use usually lasts up to five years after surgery. So some side effects from the drugs inc- include hot flushes, fatigue, mood swings, vaginal dryness, vaginal discharge, muscle pain, joint stiffness, and joint pain. So. We have now talked about the standard ways to treat breast cancer. So these methods do not remove the root causes of cancer and lead to suffering in women. So a better way to treat breast cancer is to find and understand the underlying causes. So why do we get breast cancer? So cancer is a toxicity crisis, so it's the body's way of getting rid of metabolic waste. So an acidic and harmful environment forces the defective cells to mutase. So there are several causes of breast cancer. One major reason why women develop breast cancer is because of the diet. Consumption of animal products increases your risk of breast cancer because humans are plant eaters, not meat eaters. Our bodies can't handle animal products. Several components in meat increase the risk of cancer. These include IGF-1, HGAs, and heme iron. So insulin-like growth factor 1 is a cancer-promoting growth hormone. So IGF-1 increases when we consume 
and more protein, so vegans have much lower circulating IGF-1 than meat eaters. So heterocyclic amines HJs are chemicals formed in meat or animal protein during cooking. So they develop when you prepare meat at a high temperature or over an open flame. So a large study examined postmenopausal women in Long Island. They found that barbecued smoked meat increased the risk of breast cancer. And HJs are not common in vegan food and it's only found in meat. So several studies show that vegans have less cancer than those who eat meat. So Asian women have much less breast cancer than women from America. Asians eat more rice and less meat than American women do. So breast cancer rates go up in Asians as they move to the United States and eat their diet. Getting enough vitamin D from the sun is essential for good health. So if you sunbathe in moderation, being in the sun is good for you and has many health benefits. It boosts the immune system reduces the risk of cancer and creates healthy bones. So the best way to get vitamin D is through the sun. Many studies show that vitamin D has a positive effect on cancer, so women with low levels of vitamin D are more likely to develop breast cancer. So a plus one study, they examined vitamin D level in women. And women with higher vitamin D concentration have 67% lower risk of cancer compared to women with low levels. So getting enough sleep is vital to good health. So the Nurses Health Study, they examined 78,562 women and the nurses who worked night shifts had a 36% higher rate of breast cancer than day workers. So the lack of sleep is the reason why many have so little energy, so immunity goes down as fatigue increases. So this makes your body worse at defending against bacteria, microbes or viruses. So in humans and animals, melatonin secretes during darkness. So melatonin regulates sleep, blood pressure and other bodily functions. So low levels of it in the blood increase the risk of cancer. So light during night messes with the biological clock in the brain, making it believe that it's day when it's dark outside. So suppressing these natural cycles of the body make it hard for the body to fight cancer. We live in a very toxic world, so heavy metals can increase your risk of cancer. So there are many sources of heavy metals. So this includes smoke from cars, industrial waste which leaks heavy metals to our groundwater, lakes, streams and rivers. So heavy metals can also find its way in the body by eating fish or shellfish or breathing toxic workplace air and uh, tobacco smoke. So amalgam two things contain mercury and mercury is the most toxic natural substance on earth. So the metal used in two things corrode in time and causes health problems. If you have amalgam feelings then it's good that you remove them, but you have to do it with caution. So shoes a biological dentist that provides protection during the removal of amalgam. Never use a dentist that doesn't know what he's doing. So emotional problems can also be behind cancer, so stress affects your health. So when the body and mind are in a state of balance or in unity, you experience good health. But most people do not have a sense of perfect harmony and manifest disease. Liz Borbeau is the author of the book Your Body is Telling You to Love Yourself. So she talked to a cancer patient and found several emotional wounds in them. So these came from the isolation in childhood. So the most common hurts were rejection, abandonment, betrayal, shame and injustice. So some people experience a combination of these wounds. So their bad experiences with their parents made them feel anger and resentment. So cancer manifests after they suppress these feelings and reach their emotional limits. Dr. Reich Gerdhammer is the founder of the New German Medicine and he discovered a connection between cancer and unresolved emotional conflicts. So after a man killed Hammer's son, Dirk, he soon developed testicular cancer. So 
Hammer had good health all his life, so he thought it was strange that he got cancer. So he wondered if the emotional conflict after his son's death had anything to do about it. And he worked as a chief of internal medicine in a clinic at Munich University. So he wanted to know if other cancer patients had emotional conflicts that led to cancer. So he was able to interview and do CT scans of thousands of cancer patients. So his research led him to discover how emotional trauma affects the brain. And he called these psycho-emotional traumas Hammerhead. So every cancer disease starts with a painful, acute, dramatic and isolating shock. And the distress happens on the psyche, the brain and the organ at the same time. So according to Dr. Hammer, once a perceived conflict or shock occurs, it impacts the body in a particular way. So the brain cells affected by the shock relates to the specific organ which it controls. So Dr. Hammer analyzed the data he collected and soon found certain patterns. Every lung cancer patient, for example, had the hammer heard in the same spot in the brain, and they experienced the same kind of inner conflict. So this is what he found out about breast cancer patients. So patients with cancer in the milk gland have conflicts involving care or disharmony, and women with cancer in the milk duct experience a separation conflict and cancer in the left breast was a conflict about child home or mother and cancer in the right breast was a conflict with a, with her partner or another person so in a left-handed person the reasons for cancer in the left and the right breast was uh, reversed so cancer manifests about 18 to 24 months after the this emotional conflict. So if you have breast cancer, can you remember a struggle you had with a person at that time? It can be because of a breakup, death, or other conflicts with a partner or person. So women seem to have more emotional trauma about their relationships, and this may be the reason why they have more breast cancer than men. So Dr. Hammer's research provides proof of the mind and body connection and that the power of our conflicts play in the development of our cancer. So today you learn what breast cancer is and the symptoms of it. After that you discover different screening methods used to detect breast cancer. Mammography doesn't reduce breast cancer deaths and provides no real benefits. The treatments we use today are ineffective and make cancer more aggressive. Eating meat increases your risk of breast cancer. Meat carries IGF-1, HGAs and other toxic agents. Heavy metals and a lack of sleep or vitamin D increase the risk of breast cancer too. And your past emotional trauma may increase the growth of cancer. So breast cancer patients often experience a relationship conflict before their cancer diagnosis. So I hope you today understand that the methods we use today against breast cancer is ineffective and that you can treat breast cancer the natural way without using toxic treatments. So if you want to tackle the root cause of breast cancer, then please visit our homepage at cancerwisdom.net. On our homepage we teach you the natural and holistic way to treat cancer. You also get access to our free resource library where you can download the free guides about diet, detox, emotional healing and more. So please press the like button if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I see you soon.